Thursday edition of lcpioneers.com live presented by PioStream as we are with you two days a week now. We've shifted things to join you on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 11.30 a.m. Pacific time on Facebook Live. You can also find us on demand. Watch all of our past interviews inside the fan zone at lcpioneers.com and of course on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash lcpios, keeping you connected with student athletes, coaches, alumni, and different members from throughout the Lewis and Clark College community. Hello, everyone. I am Ryan Goff. I'm the play-by-play voice and director of athletic communications for Lewis and Clark. We are the pioneers out of Portland, Oregon, and members of NCAA Division III. That institutional level has a total of 430 schools competing uh, across the entire country. Lewis and Clark sporting 19 intercollegiate athletics programs, so an opportunity for our student-athletes to compete on a national stage as a member of the Northwest Conference. Uh, it's a nine-team conference that consists of institutions from Northwest Oregon and the state of Washington, so a chance for our student-athletes to explore the Pacific Northwest with an experiential liberal arts education. A very swimming-focused version of lcpioneers.com live, as we'll have a chance to talk to student-athlete Sierra Ornas, uh, talked about the upcoming uh, meets on the road to finish the 2021 season it's been an odd season for swimming because you usually have that overlap from fall into spring and said just four duels over the course of the spring months two of which have already happened and the pioneers are off uh, a set of victories for both the men and the women in a duel against pacific last weekend so we'll talk to sierra about that and then we'll talk to the head coach of lewis and clark swimming as well chris fonts will join us later on in this edition of lcpioneers.com live now, pretty excited about it. If you have a question or a comment, we certainly encourage you to let us know in the Facebook Live comments. You can always do so. And of course, note down our email address to sports at lclark.edu should you ever have any future guests that you'd like to see on the show. We can also be found on Twitter and Instagram. You can find us on both of those platforms at LC Pioneers. That is our handle on both. So I'd certainly encourage you to check that out. And Instagram is worth noting too, because the Northwest Conference and the Skyac out of Southern California, two NCAA Division Three conferences, the two West Coast ones, are having a mascot challenge. So Lewis and Clark now into the semifinals. So if you go to our Instagram page, uh, we have in our story links to vote and uh, help the Pios get the uh, championship round opportunity as we continue in the uh, mascot challenge between those two conferences. And last but not least, uh, we encourage you to check out youtube.com slash LCPios. That is our YouTube page, and you can check that out as we have a full playlist of all of our shows dating back to March 31st of last year. Um, so pretty excited about a full year of lcpioneers.com live. All right, let's bring in our guest for today, a junior for Lewis and Clark Swimming. We are excited and thankful to have Sierra Ornest join us on the show. Uh, Sierra, thank you for letting us take some time from your Thursday. I know you have a class coming up here in about 10 minutes or so, but it is great to have a chance and opportunity to talk to you because, as I mentioned, uh, this has been a unique year for all of our programs. So swimming really comes to mind because you usually have that two-semester bridge and clearly you haven't this year. So just kind of give us an idea, 2020, 21, what's the academic year been like for you so far? The academic year has been interesting. Last semester, I had a lot more classes in person, which was a lot of fun. Um, this semester, I have a lot, or all my classes are online. Um, so it's definitely been a different academic experience, but still, it's still Lewis and Clark. I'm still getting a good um academic experience yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely and and i know that everyone's been trying their hardest to uh, shift things uh from you know the middle of march last year had to learn how to go remote all at once and now we've kind of gotten used to opportunities to do both and hybrid and, and all of that but uh you mentioned the lewis and clark education and the opportunity to, to have a chance to learn in portland uh you come from thousand oaks california so give us the origin story what was it about lewis and clark that attracted you up to the northwest yeah, I um, actually lived in Portland for a couple years when I was little. So coming back to Portland was always kind of an idea in the back of my head. Um, and Chris Bonds reached out to me, um, which really put Lewis and Clark on my radar. I started looking into the school, um, looking at the size of it, the location, and just the opportunity to swim was huge for me. Um, yeah, and there's so many like ways that the school helps its students be the best students it can be through like the Squirk or the Writing Center. Um, 
I just felt like it was going to be a place that I'd be really supported. And, and that's what I was looking for. And we're going to talk about the support, whether it's professors or Coach Fonts and, and the coaching staff at Lewis and Clark in a few moments. Learn a little bit about your English major as well. But let's start with some swimming. Uh, you're on the heels of the first two meets of the year. Both were home meets and a pretty dominant performance by both the men's and women's team against Pacific on senior day. Now you had a neat vantage point for senior day because you were kind enough to help us get uh, some filming done and put that out on our Facebook live. Uh, what has it been like uh, to see, you know, a couple of these classes of upperclassmen go through, including this most recent one on senior day? Um, it's been exciting. It was really weird to come back and to know that we were going to be competing again in the spring, which is not something I've done since high school. Um, so it's a different time. It's sunny outside, which is exciting. Um, and um, it's really great that the seniors have gotten the opportunity to race because it's um, it's a little bit heartbreaking, um, or it was last semester, knowing or thinking that there was a possibility that they wouldn't have a chance to kind of finish out their swimming career. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm really glad that we've gotten to do it. And it's been awesome to just see them dominate really they've been doing amazingly considering um the amount of swimming that we've been doing i yeah it's been awesome sierra Ernest, our guest on lcpioneers.com live uh let's kind of talk about the history uh of swimming you know when did you start and when did you kind of have a feeling that swimming was something you'd want to do for the long run um i started swimming competitively when i was seven um I lived close to the beach back home. My mom wanted my siblings and I to be strong swimmers, so she threw us in swim team, and we ended up just sticking to it. Um, I would say probably when I was like nine or ten was when I really, really got into it. Was really starting to enjoy it, and of course, I set my high sights like super high in the beginning, and I was like, "I'm going to the Olympics." Um, <laughs> Obviously, that didn't happen, and that's totally okay, but um, that's when I was like, I want to swim in college. My mom was also a collegiate athlete, and she just told me how fun it is to to do a sport in college. You have a built-in family. You get to travel, um, and it's a lot of fun. So, yeah, it was always kind of something that I wanted to do, and swimming has been part of my life for so long that I couldn't imagine like having done anything else. You bring up that family aspect, and uh, I mean, the vast majority of times, in fact, I'd be pressed to even think of one where this wasn't the case. When I ask for examples from the swimming team of what it's like to be on this team, that is like the first thing out of the mouths of the student athletes is it is a family. And usually from day one, describe what it's like in your own words to be part of the swim team at Lewis and Clark. Um, it's awesome. I, I, it's hard to describe without like examples I guess but I don't know one thing that I bring that comes to mind especially in the spring semester whether we're practicing like we are now or whether it's postseason, um we kind of always end up congregating um outside the pool <laughs> and it's just a great time people are doing homework people are throwing a football around um and it's nice to not have to like reach out to people necessarily. It's kind of nice to just be able to go to a place and know that you're going to see people there that are going to accept you and talk to you. Um, and then, yeah, we just, we try to talk to everyone on the team and um, in a normal year, we, we utilize the bone a lot and we study in the library <laughs> together. Um, yeah. Yeah, we do a lot of fun team bonding things. We just did our Galentines on the women's team recently. It was kind of like Secret Santa, but for Valentine's Day, it's a lot of fun. So. Yeah, I mean, I've seen pumpkins in the pool and, and those kind of things in the past as well. It's a definite delight to check out the social media for the swim team, which by and large, Elsie Pio swim if you haven't found them on social media. Uh, another uh, aspect of your your life at Lewis and Clark has been in the resident advisor role. And I don't know if we've talked about this on the show yet. So it's great to have someone who has been an RA in the past. What was it about the opportunity to serve as an RA? Uh, and what are some of the things that you've enjoyed most? Yeah. Um, it is a really rewarding role. It can be a really hard one. It can take up a, a lot of time. Um, but 
you meet a lot of people. It helps you. I'm more of an introverted person, or at least I always thought that I was. And it's a role that's given me a lot of confidence and um, has helped me grow as a person so much. Um, so I'm really grateful for that. And yeah, I mean, if, if you're into arts and crafts or if you like talking to people, um, it's, it's really a role that is great for a lot of people, I think. Um, and it's so much more than um, what people think of it as, as, you know, answering um, walkouts or responding to emergency situations. It's really creating community and connections with um, other people on campus and people in your immediate residence hall, which is great. It's like just meet more people. <laughs> Well, and I think it's worth noting, uh, campus living has been such a critical part of how Lewis and Clark was able to return to campus in fall 2020 across the board, area directors, admins, uh, student life to a certain degree, and then certainly campus living and the work that you do. Uh, just a heartfelt thank you uh, for all the work that you've put in to make sure uh, that students can return to Lewis and Clark and have that opportunity to be in person as much as possible. And part of the reason is for the academic programs, right? So you are an English major. What was it about the major that attracted you to it? And then has there been a class or a professor? What's a story that you've really been liking to share about your time academically at Lewis and Clark? Yeah, um, I've always been a big reader, but I thought I was, when I came into school, I wasn't sure if it was gonna be an English major or something in STEM. Um, but I ended up taking a class with Chris and Fugier and um, then Jerry Harp and just the amount that the professors in the English department care about our well-being and care about what we're learning, how we're learning and what we're taking from what we're reading um, just made me realize that that this was the major for me. Um, and yeah, last last fall, my sophomore year, um, I took a class with Jerry Harp. It was intro to poetry, and poetry wasn't something that I was super into. I enjoyed reading it occasionally. I wasn't really into writing it that much, but I knew I wanted to do some creative writing. Um, so I took it, and it is one of the best classes I've taken at the school. Um, Jerry is a delight. He um, just built my confidence up so much in writing. And, um, yeah, took another class with him last semester and same thing. He just cares about his students and, um, really helps you with your writing. It's great. Well, uh, we certainly appreciate, uh, your effort. Like I mentioned, certainly, uh, your time today to join us on the show. It sounds like there's a lot of writing in your future and, you know, we still have a long way to go. All things considered as a junior this year, uh, Sierra Ones, thank you so much for joining us today on the show and, and best of luck with the upcoming two swim meets left on the calendar. Thank you. Absolutely. That was a lot of fun. Uh, and like I said, it was a unique experience for uh, Sierra, too, because uh, we had the senior day celebration for Lewis and Clark swimming. That happened over the course of last weekend as part of the final home meet on the 2021 calendar. A very unique se senior year, like uh, Sierra pointed out, for the 2020-21 seniors at Lewis and Clark. Because swimming last year got the whole entire season in prior to the pandemic hitting. In fact, we hosted as an institution, the Northwest Conference Championships for Swimming. So those got over late February, mid to late February. And so just a month later, about March 13th, uh, is when everything shut down for the spring season. So initially it was the spring sports that had their seasons cut short. And for swimming, that wasn't the case. But coming into this year, unable to start as usual, for the swimming season. So now the seniors for the class of 2021 are experiencing just four meets. There will not be a conference championship this year, which uh, again, that's, that's a big deal. The swim championships uh, at the conference level, every swimmer that we've had on the show, every swimmer that I've had a chance to talk to says that is the event. And you can tell I had the, the fortune to attend as part of that organization that we did for last year's championships. I was there for the first couple of days and it was great to see kind of all the descriptions that I've had told to me by others firsthand and get experience that. I really enjoyed that. And uh, it was a four day event, great energy, 
a lot of top times. I mean, you're really building up to that conference meet. It's something we can talk to Coach Fonts about here coming up in our next segment. But uh, Sierra pointed out that the seniors didn't have uh, potentially weren't going to have that opportunity this year. And while there isn't a conference championship, at least there is competition in the pool. And then last Saturday, a chance to have a senior day celebration, which was was great. It's not the exact same as Coach Fonz usually does. And we'll ask him about that coming up uh, next hour because of social distancing and such. But it definitely was, uh, from the words perspective uh, on the video, it definitely translated, I thought. Uh, so we'll uh, highlight once more our YouTube page. You can go to youtube.com slash LCPios. Now that we're back in the competition, uh, pretty excited about what the YouTube page can provide fans of Lewis and Clark Athletics, especially once we get back into uh, – hopefully a non-pandemic like schedule in 2021 22 for the next academic year we'll do more with the the page because uh, you all have been great joining us on the page checking out the playlist watching past episodes of lcpioneers.com live subscribing and, and all of that so we'll continue to update that page with new interviews new information as we are able to uh, and then it was a pretty successful weekend of sports uh, for Lewis and Clark teams last weekend. We did get one win for the Lewis and Clark baseball program, one tennis victory as well with the women's tennis team getting a win over Pacific last weekend. Uh, so all in all, a pretty successful, uh, you know, second weekend of March, you had the softball program get a sweep over Willamette, which was pretty exciting. And then the women's soccer team was idle. They did not play last week or into last weekend, but they did play last night and picked up a win three, nothing over Pacific. So that's the most recent result to share with you from Lewis and Clark athletics, three, nothing on the road, beat Pacific two goals on the penalty kick by Brooklyn, uh, Brooklyn Bigley. And then another from Jezza Hutto. And that's a pretty big deal. Cause this is the first time that Lewis and Clark, has been able to start with multiple goals in at least two of their first three games on the Northwest Conference schedule since back in 2014. So the offense is definitely showing up. Plus freshman Sophia Young, first ever career shutout for the Lewis and Clark Pioneers as they held Pacific scoreless yesterday, 3-0 in that win. Uh, coming up this weekend, pretty excited about the docket of Lewis and Clark Athletics, and we invite you to go to lcpioneers.com. You can always click on the Games button in the top right corner to get the latest information about Pioneers Athletics. Is home track and field coming up on Saturday. Pretty excited about that. We'll have video for PioStream of both field and track events, uh, and then we'll have a doubleheader of softball at home too. Houston Sports Complex as Lewis and Clark welcomes in George Fox a doubleheader on Saturday, as well as a doubleheader on Sunday to go with uh, the first conference games of the year. They played Willamette last weekend, but it was not a conference counting set. So that'll be the first one coming up this weekend against George Fox. Uh, Whitworth will host Lewis and Clark women's tennis, while the men's team will host Whitworth at Club Green Meadows in Vancouver, Washington for that home match. It's a 1 p.m. start, and there should be PioStream video available for that as well. The baseball team travels to McMinnville and McMinnville will face Linfield on Saturday. And much of the same, baseball and softball still playing those games, uh, finishing up the four-game set on Sunday. Uh, women's tennis is planning to compete in Spokane against Whitworth twice on Saturday, but the men's team will actually host Whitworth again on Sunday. That'll be a non-Northwest Conference matchup. And then last but not least, Pacific travels to Lewis and Clark at 3 p.m. on Sunday uh, for a home soccer match. That's kind of been the pairing this year with the COVID schedule, uh, COVID-19 related schedule is the teams will play each other in the same week twice. For women's soccer, it happens to be more of a Wednesday and Sunday, Wednesday weekend matchup by and large. Of course, with everything that is going on with COVID-19 and athletics, we do encourage you to bookmark lcpioneers.com slash COVID, all of the updates pertaining to the NCAA and the Northwest Conference, and even a link to Lewis and Clark College's ongoing COVID-19 response available at COVID-19, that's the backslash right there, or the forward slash, excuse me, lcpioneers.com slash COVID for the latest information there. All right, I'm Ryan Goff. Thanks for being with us on this Thursday. We will come back and talk to the head coach of Lewis and Clark Swimming. That's Chris Fonts. We'll have a chance to see what Chris thought of the first two meets for his team and see what he's looking forward to on the first two road meets of 2021 as well. That'll happen next when we come back on lcpioneers.com live. My favorite spot on campus is like right outside the Dovecote, little benches and there's flowers growing there and you can get a little coffee at the Dovecote and sit there. My favorite spot on campus is definitely the weight room. Um, I get that uh, everybody loves like the gardens or uh, the manor house, but um, our facilities for athletics here are actually amazing too. And the weight room is definitely my favorite spot. 
My favorite spot on campus um, would either be the Glade outside of the athletic facilities or South Campus. What is my favorite spot on campus? I really like the back porch of the Manor House. Um, it looks out on Mount Hood and on a clear day, it's super beautiful just to sit around with friends. Hi, I'm Nick Lombardi. Um, something I've learned at Winterham this year is how to communicate a vision. My biggest takeaway from Winterham is probably the networking. Getting to talk to everybody, connect with people for the future is one of the most valuable things and I did Winterham last year, came back for more this year. I think a way in which my liberal arts education has really helped me and my group uh, formulate our ideas is that concept of critical thinking and having many different backgrounds. Me being an econ major and my two groupmates being chemistry majors we really get that well-rounded background, well-rounded ideas. I think overall it's absolutely worth doing. Um, you, you find yourself not only being more prepared for, say, well, this next semester, um, on top of being more prepared for life in general. You're watching LCPioneers.com live presented by PioStream as we continue our Thursday show. I'm Ryan Goff. Thank you for being with us. And we continue the swim related theme and have a chance to talk to the head coach of the Lewis and Clark Pioneers swimming programs. Uh, that is head coach Chris Fonts joining us in our second segment. Uh, coach, it is always great to have a chance to talk to you, especially now that we've seen your team in the pool a couple of times already. we got some road meets coming up for the Pioneers. Uh, let's start with the former. Uh, give me a feel What's your analysis of the way that the team has started off the spring 2021 schedule? Yeah, it's great to talk to you, Ryan. I, th I think the team started off great uh, with our competitive season, and it was a, it was a long road to get to competing uh, with anybody outside of our own team. Uh, I think our team has long uh, been you know, competitive in workouts and wanting to Kind of lift each other to their best so we, we swim pretty fast in practice uh which is all we did for the whole fall while we were together and uh jumping back in the pool in february um but it's it's really good to see them get a chance to step up in the blocks and race other swimmers which is you know we talk about it's not everything swimming's about but uh racing and competition is part of what competitive swimming uh, brings to us so uh, it, it was really great uh, just seeing seeing the races and the cheering and all the things that kind of you know, lift us up after just a very confusing past 12 months and, and you bring that up and it made me think of a question because I, I have asked this I think of you but certainly of more of our longer tenured coaches at Lewis and Clark as you've seen a lot of things in your collegiate coaching career certainly Navy never anticipated certainly hadn't seen a pandemic how much more or how rewarding is it to go through such a long endeavor of uncertainty and now wind up at a point where your team does have that opportunity to compete? It's, uh, it's, it's different for sure. Uh, you know, normally we have a, we have a calendar in April and we go through the summer knowing what that next season more or less will look like. 
structurally, uh, calendar wise, and to have all of that just wiped away, just erased, you know, really as of a year ago, March, and just having no idea if we would um, you know, have students on campus uh, over the summer, like it, it was a long haul. Uh, and so to have students on campus and them being in classes and us training in the pool and doing those things, it's, it's nice to see it come together with some competition at the end. And, you know, it's, a, it's an abridged season to say the least, uh, without a conference championship, without a national championship for anybody on the horizon in swimming. Uh, but, you know, it also, I think, hopefully makes me appreciate, hopefully makes uh, a lot of our swimmers appreciate going to the pool for a dual meet and putting on their warm-ups and their, their team gear and a team suit, team cap, and, and uh, representing the school, doing what we do. Um, and so that's that I think is more poignant you know, definitely you know the the dual meets being kind of the end the end all for the competitive season reframes kind of what we're looking at and we're we're you know, we're planning to swim fast in in a week and a half and two and a half weeks at our last two dual meets so that's that's the target and it's just kind of a recalibration of what you know what a normal season can look like our guest is Chris Fonts, the head coach of Lewis and Clark Swimming on lcpioneers.com live. And we had Sierra Ornest join us in the, the first segment. So we have a swimming theme day on the show. And, and that was special because you have a junior who had a chance to film and share the senior day ceremony, which uh, honestly, Chris, you do that as well as, as any of the, the coaches at Lewis and Clark. And I bring that up because she mentioned the great sight it was to see the seniors get a chance to have a senior day with competition. Describe mm -hmm. that day from your perspective. Yeah. You know, senior day is a, is a, every sport has their own approach to how and when they honor their seniors. And we have always uh, like a lot of swim programs honed in on that last home dual meet. And usually that's in January this year. It was, it was in March. Uh, which is different, but also the same in that we get excited for it and we arrive that day knowing we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit uh, about our seniors and the class, but also hand them some goodies and some visual visual reminders uh, of of you know the much the much bigger uh, piece of the equation of how much how much they mean to us and to just kind of take that moment. Um, before the meet, but really to, to think about celebrating them the whole meet long. And you know, this year, that's going to be a, an elongated celebration. We've got some more things ahead for our seniors and, and just really want them to know we appreciate them being here, you know, at the, the front of the ship and the top of the top of the team um, throughout a really strange year. And so, you know, seeing them, like you said, seeing them, uh, all together and masks, but that was the, really the only difference. We're, we're wearing masks and so we're not hugging. Uh, we're not doing the high fives and, and those kind of things in the traditional way, but uh, I don't think that's the most important part. The, you know, the important part is you know, training together, racing together, uh, and celebrating all of them together. So yeah, to see them come down the deck and receive balloons and flowers and goodies and a bag and and but more than that i think like the adulation of their teammates and, and uh, just a little uh you know little, little lighter moment um, when we have a lot of heavy moments these days so it was it was great to do a senior day at a competition because you know who knew if that was going to happen for them and one of your seniors sabrina murray has had a great start to the 2021 year. And along with Eric Norman, in fact, we just saw it scrolling past on the screen, named Northwest Conference Student Athlete of the Week. And that's always significant when you're a recipient of one of those awards. But swimming also is another one that makes me think it has to be extra special because you think about how many swimmers on any one weekend are competing and to have mm -hmm. not one but both of those slots represented by Lewis and Clark pioneers, uh, describe Sabrina, describe Eric and their performances last Saturday against Pacific. Yeah, they, they've gotten off to a great start and that's, you know, that's due to a, you know, at, at this point for both of them, long swimming careers of being committed to their training and the work and the off seasons and, and, uh, 
you know, so it, it's really like th seeing things come to fruition. They didn't catch a lucky break <laughs> last week they or the week before when they both had some outstanding swims, you know, against Linfield as well. They were, were really more seeing things play out because of commitment and work ethic. So you, you love to see that recognized. Uh, and, and certainly as a coach, I recognize that already. And long before they get, you know, an acknowledgement from the conference, uh, we, we knew that, <laughs> that they were, that they were committed and uh, and ready to step up when given the chance. So it's it's fun to see the acknowledgement. You know, the the awards are also nice. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. You're watching lcpioneers.com live presented by Pio Stream. Chris Fonts is our guest on the show, head coach of Lewis and Clark Swimming. So we did kind of look back at the first two meets of the year, and you alluded a little bit to the final two. But uh, if you can elaborate, give us some insight. What are you looking forward to? with the final two meets of the year starting on the 27th with George Fox. Yeah, we're going to we're going to target that meet and the Willamette duel the following week as our, you know, the climax of the season because that's what we have ahead of us. And so, you know, wishing for a conference championship or or the calendar to be different uh, is is really of no use at this point. We kind of take the runway we're given and we do the training we can in that time. And we've actually had a, a good run since February to, to build up and then, you know, intend to swim as fast as we can, uh, but, but do it, you know, thoughtfully and supportively and enjoying, enjoying the you know, last few weeks of practice with teammates in, in this kind of a setting. And I, th I think we've got some kids who are going to surprise either themselves or each other, uh, and that's those are both fun, and that happens every year. And so it'll be, it'll be nice to see them get to kind of hone in on and target a meet for, you know, a little more peak performance approach to a dual meet than we normally have. Um, you know, so we're not, we're not typically resting much heading into a dual meet, and we haven't much thus far. But you know, the, the next couple of weeks will be a good time to, to kind of pinpoint those 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 meets and they're both away which will be different and interesting but a fairly easy lift to, as far as taking the team on the road during this strange time because we're we're just going down the road uh, to to some local rivals so i think i think that'll be really good um, it's it's also it's been neat seeing uh other teams in person and the other coaches in person you now it's, it's the longest i've gone without seeing some of my coaching peers uh, in, in my coaching life because we see each other a few times a year and, and haven't been in person since last, you know, a year ago, February. So seeing them and their teams in person and you know, ju just the, the similarity in the, the energy and the occasional unsureness and, and all of that that their teams are also grappling with. Um, I don't know. It normalizes things a little bit, but it also, you know, they're, they're thankful and glad to be at our pool. And I, I hope that when we show up to other people's facilities that we will give off some of that same vibe. Like we're glad to be doing swimming right now because there's a lot of other stuff on most of our minds, um, but you know, really appreciating that. So. Well, and I, I would, I, I have to say, you know, it, the coaches and all the work that y'all put in to make sure that your student athletes are in as good a place as they can be over the course of what is now a year long pandemic experience uh, while they're in the middle of their college uh, careers. We can't do this without you, Chris. And uh, you were so kind hearted and so selfless. I'm so thankful that you're a part of Lewis and Clark. Uh, best of luck with the rest of the meets down the road. Thank you for what you do. And of course, thank you for your time today on the show. I appreciate that, Ryan. Thank you. Have a good afternoon. Absolutely. That's Chris Fonts joining us on lcpioneers.com live. Uh, mean it. Absolutely. I, I hadn't even thought we were going to talk to Sierra about being a resident advisor. I hadn't really even thought about the impact in that until that moment uh, that I asked that question about all the things that resident advisors have had to do, all the extra training, I suspect, all the extra cleaning, all the extra preparation to have students come back to campus. Campus Living needs to give a ton of kudos. Uh, and, and there's clearly, you know, departments across campus, even with the uh, recent ice storms, you know, big thank you to all of our facilities staff who worked extra time to get things in place. And then you look at the coaching staff too. Uh, you know, the, the swim team rosters, uh, some of the bigger rosters 
on on our webpage. You know, you look at all those names and all the people that our coaches take care of over the course of a year, uh, let alone when the schedule is in a non-pandemic sense. And of course, uh, we know that there's been a lot of uncertainty and our, our student athletes deserve a ton of credit. And, and I think our coaches do too. So it's great to hear Chris uh, talk about what he's looking forward to and what has been, yeah, as he mentioned, just one of the oddest years with, you know, not even getting the chance to compete uh, and, and get to see some of the coaches that he's used to seeing on a, a week in a week out basis once the season starts. So uh, really great uh, interviews with Sia Ornis and uh, Chris Fonts today on the show. Uh, we will have more coming up for you uh, next week. We're going to continue to have lcpioneers.com live twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays. At 11.30 a.m. Pacific time, although I suspect there might be a chance we'll bump the time uh, table up just about 10 minutes, we might start going live around 11.20 a.m. Pacific time. We'll certainly let you know when that is, so so plan on 11.30 until then. But I've kind of noticed that there are a lot of classes for our student-athletes that begin around 11.40, like Sierra had today. Uh, and so it'd be nice to have an extra 10-minute window ahead of that so that we can include more conversations with our current student-athletes on the show. But that said, until we make that change, uh, be sure to look for us at around 11.30 a.m. Pacific time, Tuesdays and Thursdays. You can find the latest schedule at lcpioneers.com slash live. That takes you to our Facebook Live page. I also suspect that there might be a chance we'll start adding our stream on tr- our Twitter as well. So if you uh, haven't followed us already, it's uh, twitter.com slash lcpioneers. Great place to go, especially right now with competition going on again. Uh, it is one of the best places for us to share what's happening maybe during a game, shortly after a game on the weekends. That's at twitter.com slash lcpioneers. So until we talk to you again, coming up next Tuesday at 11.30 a.m. Pacific Time on Facebook Live, I'm Ryan Goff. Thank you so much for having fun with us today. Thank you to Sierra Ornes and Chris Fonts for joining us as our guest today. We'll see you again soon for more of the show. Be sure to check us out at youtube.com slash LCPios and all of our past shows available to watch on demand inside the fan zone at lcpioneers.com. Until then, goodbye, everybody. I'm Casey Jones, and I teach a range of classes, general chemistry, organic chemistry, and also some advanced classes. And I have a research lab that currently I have four students working with me um, as part of the Rogers program. The summer experience is a way to get really deeply involved in the science that is here and be able to um, start to define what might be what you want to do next. So the brown bag gives our students a chance to explain their research and really show the context and the application of what they're doing to a very broad range of students and faculty. It's interesting to be able to communicate to other scientists what your work is, and it forces you to learn how to talk about your subject so that not only experts in your field can understand it, but others can understand it as well, which I just believe is a good life skill. To talk about your research in a way that anybody can understand it really is a valuable experience, and it's something that you don't get a lot of practice for except in these contexts, because oftentimes you're giving a presentation to a classroom filled with people who know basically the same things that you do, but in a brown bag, you have to be able to um, explain and provide motivation for everything that you're working on and why it's important and why it's relevant to be studying.